Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I've, I've been following the city, I mean, the county supervisor, so it's like, I don't wonder if that's rolling down to us, too, so. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah. But then they still had, they still had It is 4.30 and I'm calling this meeting of the Design Review Board to order. Recording Secretary, can you please call roll? Board Member Birch? Present. Board Member Cook is absent. Board Member Liptak? Present. Board Member Sharon is absent. Board Member Withrich? Present. Vice Chair Weigel? Present. Chair Jones Carter? Present. Let the record reflect that all board members are present with the exception of board member Cook and board member Sharon. Item two, approval of minutes. We have none. Item three, public comment. We are now taking public comment on item number three, non-agenda matters. This is the time when any person may address the board on matters not listed on this agenda but which are within the subject matter jurisdiction of this committee. Recording Secretary, can you please provide instructions to the public? If you wish to make a public comment, please make your way to the podium. Uh, Chair Jones Carter, I'm seeing nobody make their way to the podium. Public comment is closed. <laughs> Item four, board business. Statement, item 4.1, statement of purpose. Zoning code chapter 20-52.030F, project review. The review authority shall consider the location, design, site plan configuration, and the overall effect of the proposed project upon surrounding properties and the city in general. Review shall be conducted by comparing the proposed project to the general plan, any applicable specific plan, applicable zoning code, standards and requirements, consistency of the project, project within the city's design guidelines, architectural criteria for special areas, and other applicable city requirements. Item 4.2, board member reports. Are there any board member reports? Hearing none, thank you. We don't have to do public comment because there were no reports, good. Item 4.3, there is none. Item five, department reports. Amy, do you have a report for us? 
Good afternoon, uh, Chair. No report today. Thank you. Item six, statements of abstention. Do we have any on item 8.1? No? Okay. Item seven, consent items. There are none. Item eight, scheduled items. We're moving on to the first scheduled item. 8.1, public hearing, coffee park self-storage, major design review, 3282 Coffee Lane, dash DR20-014, presented by Mike Wixon, the city, I'm sorry, contract planner. Are there any ex parte disclosures on this item? Great. Okay, so I'll, I'll begin uh, the presentation, and thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Mike Wixon, contract planner with the city. And uh, this item is a self-storage project known as the Coffee Park Self-Storage Project. It also has a conditional use permit with it as a project, uh, which will be considered either by the Planning Commission or the Zoning Administrator soon hereafter this meeting. Um, so if we could go to the next slide, please. So the, uh, the application itself is for a two-story building. It's approximately 69,000 square feet. Uh, there are 25 off-site parking spaces that I'll point out to you. And that is the need for the conditional use permit is the off-site parking spaces. And it's on approximately 1.3 acres uh, in the coffee park area. Uh, and it's located at both 3282 and 3242 coffee lane. So the project takes up a few different parcels, but it's primarily located at 3282 uh, Copy Lane. Uh, next slide, please. And again, this is showing the project location and kind of the uh, neighborhood context that it resides in. You can see the project area highlighted in green. Um, and then you can see the, the blue area actually contains all of the parcels that are involved in the project, but the project area itself is really limited to that, that component that's shown in the green. The project site fronts on Coffee Lane. The project site will also have access to Piner Road, uh, which you'll see in the site plan as we get through the presentation. And then um, uh, rather than discuss the surrounding uses right now, I think uh, I'll, I'll go to the next slide and we can discuss it a little bit more too. Again, this is the project site, but it, it tends to show the project site and the parcel in context with where there are offsite parking. So you can see the dashed offsite parking area, and then also what will be a future dashed offsite uh, vehicle access to the south onto Piner Road. The, um, the property is owned uh, both uh, this site and then the site to the south by the same owner. So having the vehicle access and making adjustments to the lot lines for both of these parcels to complete the project uh, won't be any issue for the applicant. There's also a lot line adjustment application that will be required in the future, but that lot line adjustment application has not been submitted as of yet. So if we can go to the next slide, please. Again, this is a little bit more in context. This, these slides show the vacant parcel on the left, the smaller inset. You can see the vacant parcel on context with the uh, development surrounding it. Uh, in particular, to the north is the Piner Creek uh, Industrial Park. To the south is both the Convenience Mart, a gas station, and a car wash. And those are all owned by the same owner as this project. And then uh, there's also a tire and brake, or tire and uh, uh, it's a brake store to the south. And then um, there's some other industrial uses to the east, as well as to the west, there are some industrial uses uh, that are, and also the uh, fire station immediately west of the project site. We can go to the next slide, please. 
So this is a street view of the project site. Uh, again, this is looking into the vacant portion of the, of the undeveloped site. You, to your right, you can see just the uh, beginnings of the building. That's the convenience store gas station. And then to the left, you can see how the redwood screen uh, this site from the uh, Piner Creek uh, Industrial Park. And then if you uh, go to the next slide, please. Again, a little bit more from the street view. This is showing where the off-site parking spaces would be relative to the undeveloped portion of the site. And if you go to the next slide, please. And again, this is uh, again showing the, the vacant parcel, but a little bit more of Coffee Lane, so you can see how Coffee Lane exists along the frontage of the site. The project will complete the improvements uh, necessary to have the complete street. Uh, and th those improvements will be completed between the existing gas station to the south and then the Piner Creek Industrial Park to the north along the frontage uh, of the project site. If you go to the next slide, please. This is uh, showing the, the street view from uh, Piner Road. And this is just given so you get an idea of uh, what it looks like looking into the site from Piner Road. It's not a perfect uh, view into it, but there is an issue that I'll present later that I just wanted to get you, give you a feel for what, what that kind of looks like and uh, kind of get that in your mind a little bit. If we can go to the next slide, please. Uh, and again, this is just showing surrounding land uses in the buildings to give you an idea of the architecture surrounding the site. Um, so a lot of parapet roofs around it um, and that type of uh, almost like an international style, but not quite. Um, and then uh, again, to the west is industrial uses in the city gas station. To the south is the tire store. And then there's also the Empire Floors to the south, um, as well as there's an existing uh, shopping center, small little strip center to the south. And you can see the architecture of that particular site as well. So if you go to the next slide, please. The uh, project history started in about 2019. At the end of 2019, a concept review application was sit submitted, but then it was later withdrawn um, in favor of just going straight to the design review. The applicant had met with staff in a pre-application, and I think the applicant felt as if they had gotten good enough direction to proceed forward without doing a concept review. So in September 20, uh, 2020, the applicant submitted the application, uh, and then also in 2021, the application was submitted for the conditional use permit for the offsite parking, and then those applications were deemed complete recently in July. And here we are. And so if you can go to the next slide, please. This particular slide is just showing the context of the general plan. The gray area both on the project site and surrounding is all light industry in the general plan. The uh, use itself is consistent and a listed use for the general plan. Uh, so it is a permitted use uh, by the general plan itself. If you go to the zoning uh, on the next slide, the zoning shows also light industrial zoning. Uh, the blue shows the, the site itself, but all the clear area on the map is a light industrial, or most of it. Um, directly to the south, again, is uh, a little bit of general commercial, um, or the, uh, yeah, general commercial. But uh, the project site itself is light industrial. And again, the use itself, uh, which is the self-storage use, is a permitted use as long as it meets the development standards listed in the zoning code. And you'll see in the staff report that upon review of those standards, project does meet all of those criteria and therefore is a permitted use for the particular site. If you can go to the next slide, please. This is uh, showing the proposed site plan. Uh, the, the site itself has a little bit of an L shape Again, I mentioned the lot line adjustment. There will be a slight, slight lot line adjustment. And if you look at the lower right-hand corner uh, where the building kind of ends up there on the south, south elevation, uh, generally in that area, that, that lot line will be shifted a little bit to the west so that it can encompass uh, what's necessary for the retention area. 
and then also for uh, the exiting access road. So this essentially is a site plan that's showing an adjusted lot line in and of itself, and that's what the review was calculated on and uh, how it was evaluated. You can see the parking that's provided on site. There'll be a few parking spaces provided directly on site, right up at the front uh, on the left-hand side uh, of this site plan as you look at it. Um, and then there'll be a small little walkway to those 25 parking spaces directly to the north that will give access to the office area that's shown kind of in the lower left-hand corner of the building there. The, uh, the way that the, the project will work and have access, it will provide access from Coffee Lane um, and it will come in off of Coffee Lane, both ingress and egress. So uh, there will be a little turnaround area in the front if people come to the site and see the, the wrong place, they will be able to turn around um, and then exit to Coffee Lane. However, anybody who's entering the site will have to go through a, a, a gate, or that's a security gate at the front, and then they will press the buttons, get with the correct security code, they'll enter the site, uh, go to the right, it, is, it will be a one-way drive aisle to the right, and follow the drive aisle all the way out to an exit gate, which is uh, back again in that uh, kind of lower right corner that I mentioned. And uh, then that access will go finally on to Piner Road. And we'll go to the next slide, please. The uh, access is shown a little bit more completely here. So you can see that gray area, that's the, uh, the access road through the project site meets all the requirements for width and uh, side parking so people can load and unload. Um, then this is the landscape plan. So you can see the limited landscaping uh, that will be put on site. There'll be a few more trees added per the conditions of approval, both in the front, or actually it will be to the front. And so that, that was included in the conditions of approval. Um, if you go to the next slide, please. This is a slide of the building elevations, and I've got uh, a few slides to show the building elevations. Just kind of walk through it. This is looking directly west, so this is the view uh, directly from Coffee Lane, and you can see the uh, architecture proposed has a lot of variety to it: different materials, um, different elevations of the parapet wall. Uh, they'll also have a, a steel awning with a steel rod tiebacks. And there'll be clear glass windows with anodized steel or anodized aluminum um, mullions for the windows. And the windows are clear enough that you will see through those at night. So you'll see back through them. And that's kind of what's shown in the orange there that you're looking through the windows to the storage units themselves into the back. And that also would be true for the uh, office area down below there on the bottom floor, uh, just below that upper area. So that upper area, we'll come back to that, or I wanna come back to that a little bit later to discuss uh, just the design of that and uh, kind of walk through that with the design review board. Uh, if you go to the, oh, before I go to the next slide, sorry. Uh, just walking back, the, the east elevation is facing a developed light industrial building and then it's at the back of a light industrial uh, area or use. So that's why you don't see any uh, ornamentation or any real variety in that back. It's really not necessary. Um, and then if you go to the next slide, you'll see the building elevations facing both the south and north. The north elevation is what faces the Piner Creek Industrial Park. And then the south elevation is what will face the existing um, convenience store and gas station. So as you look at the south elevation, uh, the complete south, south elevation is shown just below uh, these two. Basically, I, I pulled up the west side of the south elevation and the east side of the south elevation so that you could see them a little bit more in detail. Um, and then the full elevation itself is presented just below them. But again, you can see the similar materials, windows, uh, the um, uh, the steel tie backs and, and the awning in the front. The doors themselves will be steel man doors. Um, 
And then there will also be a, a wainscot treatment on the bottom. It's a, a, a brick of sorts or a, a pre-manufactured stone veneer that will be a complementary color to the building itself. And you can see that as well. So one of the things that I wanted to point out in this elevation, because it begins to get into the issue that I'll be discussing a little bit more, is if you look closely on the top picture uh, on the right side, you'll see the parapet line uh, of the wall behind the gate. So this is actually behind the security gate, but you'll see the parapet wall of the elevation is a little bit below what is going to be the parapet wall line on the backside or north facing uh, elevation. And in between those two lines, you'll see a little bit of a gray area with those lines. And that's essentially the sloping roof. And that's, that is our issue that we just wanted to raise to the design review board. Um, and I'll go into it a little bit more, but I just wanted to be able to point that out in the elevations. That, that same feature is also on the right side of the building elevation here presented. So you can see it again, it's, on the, it's facing the interior of the project site directly, um, but there is that view to the sloping roof. And I just wanted to point that out for now. Um, so if we go to this, uh, actually the north facing elevation, we don't need to go to the next slide yet, but the north facing elevation has a little bit more um, delineation to it, if you will, um, especially at the front, you can see the score lines and the stucco uh, wall material. It's a beige color, so it's very similar to the front and it, it goes back approximately 40 feet and then begins the uh, vertical um, uh, galvanized metal uh, wall material. And that wall material will continue back to the left side there, or what would be the east side of the building. And then it'll have a few break points in it to break it up a little bit with the score lines and um, stucco wall material. And you can see that very clearly in that elevation. And if you go to the next slide, please. And this is just meant to give you, uh, as a design review board, a feel for the building materials. You can see the um, veneer stone on the bottom. Of this is not, I'm looking at the picture in the upper left corner. You can see the anodized uh, aluminum doors, windows. You can see the steel awnings and then the tie backs. You can see the veneer stone, all, all being very similar to what's proposed with this project. And then you can see the steel man doors in the next uh, picture to the right. And again, more of the same uh, on the picture to the right of that. You see the steel tie backs, the steel awning, uh, anodized aluminum windows and the clear windows. And then the, uh, the one on the very right, in the upper right, is just meant to show the uh, keypad and what that will look like at the gate, at the entry gate. The one just below that is the pedestrian en entry gate. So that is what the gate design will look like when the product is finished or the, the building is built out. Uh, to the left of that is the faux veneer stone. It's a tile uh, that will be placed on the building so you get a feel for the look of that and the color. And again, uh, just to the left of that is the clear window so you can see how the clear windows will be seen. Uh, you can, Basically, you'll be able to see through those uh, into the back. And um, I think lastly, it's just to the left of that is the lower left corner is the stucco itself with, it, it doesn't show up very well, but that'll have the score lines are there and the score lines will be included in the uh, design of this building as well. And again, that shows the, the stone veneer as well uh, on that bottom wainscot treatment. You go to the next slide, please. In context, this is the street rendering as to what it will look like as a finished product. And you can see the completed design here so the two issues that staff has that we just wanted to raise to the board uh, are number one, the element that is uh, the upper pop out element uh, above the office area. And you can see it has that faux wood tile treatment. Uh, and then the sign is up there for the coffee park storage. So that treatment in staff's opinion tends to just float up above and doesn't really have much of a connection to the base. Um, and so that, that's just something that we had raised to the uh, applicant as something to consider. 
the app we have raised to the applicant the possibility of continuing that pop out all the way down. And if you were to do that, it would create a few issues. Uh, but the main issue is that it would take up the area of the walkway and start to press into the parking and remove another parking space from the front uh, area. Um, and then as well, we said we were looking at it and considering maybe we just use the faux tile to just extend the faux tile down and give it some connection to uh, the wainscot treatment and, and then the foundation. And uh, that presents a problem in that the steel tie backs uh, would then be put over the top of that tile and that could create a structural issue later on. Um, and so then the applicant suggested possibly the use of a paint material. So just simply painting uh, what's below it with some complementary color that could tie it into the, the ground. So I'm raising this to, uh, to the design review board. If this is an issue to you, uh, there's a few ideas there of what might be done to address it. And then hopefully uh, it can be discussed a little bit further. Now, and I know the applicant is there. So the applicant would be, I'm sure, more than happy to discuss ideas and uh, if that is something of concern to the design review board. Then the next uh, issue, again, is the interior building elevations parapet wall height. And again, uh, both these elevations shown here, I've pointed out where that sloping roof is. Uh, hopefully those are visible here in these pictures. Um, what you'll see in these elevations as well is even above the um, the stucco area and the scored stucco area, you can see the the parapet wall line in back of it. So that lighter line in the back will be the finished parapet wall line uh, all the way around the building. You can see it has slight elevation changes as it goes around the building, which is good. Um, however, again, you can see that slightly in that interior elevation, you can see a little bit of that sloping roof and uh, whether or not that might be an issue to the designer board is the other issue we're raising. And just if, if it's something that is of concern to the design review board that you might consider raising the parapet wall height slightly to uh, cover that or make that completely invisible or not visible from the street. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about how that might be visible. Um, right now, it, you have a lot of it covered, or it's pretty well covered by the existing building immediately to the south. Um, you recall I mentioned that there's the existing development of the convenience store and then the gas station and car wash. And those together will block quite a bit of the view into the site. However, there still exists the possibility that it might be viewed from, from uh, Piner. And therefore, we're just raising this to, to be sure you're aware of what is shown and the possibility that might be visible from the street. The next slide, if you can go to that, which is the line of sight from Coffee Lane. And the applicant has prepared this to kind of give you an idea that if you follow that line of sight out from Coffee Lane all the way back into the uh, back of the site, you won't see or you wouldn't see uh, or shouldn't see the sloping roof um, from that perspective because that front parapet wall should block your line of sight. Um, if you took that same line of sight a little bit forward into the wall that's south facing all the way back along, there are sm some small areas where you might be able to see into the site and see a little bit of that sloping roof. So again, it's not a serious issue. It's just something that if, the, if it's a concern to the design review board, um, it's an item for discussion. But I think for the most part, it, it should be um, pretty well screened from street view, but there might be some sights into it. So uh, again, if we go to the next slide, I had mentioned the pop out, that was the other issue. And so there it is again. Um, Kind of wrapping this up, the project itself is uh, and it qualifies for an exemption as a class 32 project, uh, according to the CEQA, as an infill development project. And there's quite a bit of discussion given to that in the staff report and how it qualifies for that exemption. And uh, again, next slide, please. 
just recapping the issues for discussion, the design of the pop-out feature and the uh, elevation of the interior parapet wall, whether you'll have view into those that sloping roof. Uh, and then the next slide, please. So overall, as recommended by the Planning and Economic Development Department, that the Design Review Board approve the resolution that's included in your packet uh, for the design review application for the Coffee Park Self Storage Project at 3282 and 3240 Coffee Lane. And that concludes my presentation. Um, and I'd be happy to answer any questions if you had them. And again, uh, Mr. Ed Borsma, I believe, is in the audience. And if you have questions, I'm sure he'd be more than happy to, to discuss them with you. And that's it. Thank you. <clears throat> Chair, could I ask a quick question? Sure. You. Um, I, I'm not sure if questions to staff regarding the project as a whole are, are appropriate. I would like to maybe, if we could, before we heard the balance of the presentation, just get a quick read on what our approval is relative to the conditional use approval and just make sure that I understand what we're, what we're looking at this evening to, to understand. And, if, if we could just, if I don't want to get deep into the details, we can do that after the applicant presentation, but could we just kind of take a quick look at what it is we're looking at tonight, what the approval is, and how it relates to the conditional use permit? Is that what I? Sure, I, um, I'm gonna defer to uh, Mike Wixon, the planner, um, just because he'll probably have a more detailed answer for you. Um, I believe I know the answer, but I see him on here, so I'll stop talking. Yeah, so um, before you tonight is the design review, and that would be a, a, a quote unquote a final design review because there's no uh, preliminary design review here. So it'd be a final design review for the project as a whole. So that would include uh, actually the offsite parking, not the use of it, but the design re as it relates to the project and having access to the project as well as the project site, uh, the building that you've been shown, the all the on-site development. And I did leave out one little component that there will be a small little uh, uh, part of a awning that is used for the solar array on the parcel to the south. And that small little section of the awning will be removed so that the uh, gate can be extended onto that area that will have the lot line adjustment. That's also part of the design review tonight. So um, uh, hopefully that answered your question. If it didn't, let me know. I can try and elaborate more. You hit the issue on the head that I was curious about, which is if we're making a land use decision regarding the parking or evaluating it, not that I have to, not to say that I'm against it, uh, or if that was going to be the conditional use permit, in other words, the design of the parking is kind of one thing, the path that goes there, that sort of thing. I just wasn't sure if our comments on or our vote wrapped up the viability of the offsite parking, which it sounds like the use permit does that. That would be correct. Okay. That, that would address the use itself. Great. Understood. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Hi, would you like to proceed with your presentation? I'm Ed Borsma with Cubix, and this is Trevor with the Civil Engineer. We aren't going to provide an additional presentation other than what Mike did, but we're available for questions, comments as needed. Thank you. Well, I'd like to open public comment. Uh, public, I would like to open the public hearing on this item. Recording secretary, do we have any public comment? If you wish to make a public comment, please make your way to the podium. Chair Jones Carter, I'm seeing nobody making their way to the podium. Great. Yeah. 
Yeah, I don't. I don't think they can do that now. I think they have to be here. Yes. So the question is, if we, it's my understanding that people have to be here in person, that we're not taking emails and voicemail messages as public comment. Uh, thank you for the question. Public comment can be provided either um, in person here in the chamber or we can accept emails prior to the meeting and that can be uploaded as late correspondence and the planner can summarize it. Um, but yeah, no voice messages, no uh, Zoom comments as of now. Thank you. Do we have any emails? Chair Jones Carter, we don't have any emails. Thank you. So moving forward, if I say, do we have any public comment that would include that? Correct. Typically, if we do receive an email, I will upload it as late correspondence. Um, for whatever reason, if it's too close to the meeting and I don't have time, then at that point, the planner would read um, that late correspondence aloud. Thank you. So um, are there any questions of the board for the staff or the applicant? I'm sure there are. Would we like to start with Ernest? Sure. Uh, thanks for the presentation. Um, just some quick questions. Um, where would um, the mechanical equipment uh, be going on this building? The mechanical equipment would be on the roof at the west end of the property hidden behind parapets. Uh, how, how tall is the parapet over the roof at that area? I'm trying to find it here. It's approximately four feet. Okay. And then, can you clarify the parking count? I, it looked like it was 25 spaces serving the site that are off-site plus the accessible space, the secondary space, and then maybe a manager space, is that correct? Uh, there's a manager space inside the building, but yes, you described that accurately. The offsite spaces actually are already there, and there's an easement in place for them, uh, but the, the operation of the self-storage will not require those, and um, I'm not entirely sure why we are even going through the exercise because the spaces are there and there's an easement already from some prior efforts on this particular project. But um, as the site operates, there's so few cars that will be in the site at any given time. We expect somewhere in the neighborhood of three to four cars at any given time will be on site. And there might be one at the office, two or three perhaps near their storage units loading for 15 minutes at a time and then leaving. So it's, it's really overkill to have the, make the, the parking spaces that we're talking about today. The offsite spaces aren't even necessary. Yeah, so, so technically there's about 28 spaces that serve. That's about right. Okay, got it. Um, that's actually all my questions, thank you. Thank you, Michael. Yeah, some of my uh, questions revolved around the parking as well and it's funny because I've kind of bounced back and forth. 25 spaces in, it looked really odd given our, uh, the understanding that I've gained of storage projects and how few spaces are required. So um, it, was, it was interesting to kind of work through where they were, what they were for, um, probably good to have the overflow. Um, I guess my question is that, that those, are on pr those are on private property, right? That's, a, that's an easement through, okay, so it's an easement. And that easement um, it is not likely to be uh, changed or vacated in a, in, a, in, in, in a short term. So it just always, I always try to pay attention when parking for a project is n not on the project and we've seen projects go down where they couldn't provide parking and you just couldn't rely on an alternate source offsite. Um, so I, I, I think that your answer probably clears up any questions that I had about 
about the parking. Um, that's sort of a comment, I'm sort of working through it, <laughs> or a question, I'm sort of working through it. Um, what is the parapet setback from the, from the facade? I don't know who has the best answer to that. Is, is, yeah, is there a setback from the finished building line to the parapet? Or is the parapet, I was, in looking at the drawing, I'm seeing this, the, the little strip of white. I'm assuming that that's a, a, a parapet screen behind the parapet. Am I missing the, the, the building wall, the exterior wall, is the parapet. Is the parapet, okay. And then with regard to the parapet and, and the question raised by staff about the possibility of it being visible, you know, in a, in a flat elevation, sure, you see that. The, um, the, the distance to Piner is roughly 200 feet. The cross section we drew from Coffee Lane shows 500 feet of distance. The further you get away, the more you could potentially see that parapet, but the cross section that we provided shows that you will not see the parapet even from 500 feet. You're stealing my thunder from my comments. I always tell people elevations don't tell you anything about the real world. <laughs> when, you're, when you're in a car on the ground, you're, you've got a different view, so elevations are deceiving. But I, I appreciate that and understand that. So I just wanted to try to understand where it was. Um, I, I think th those are all my questions. So, Vic? Uh, hello, thank you for being here. Um, I have a few questions. The roof, what is the roof material? It's a standing seam Galvalume roof. I, I thought it said standing seam someplace and I couldn't, I was searching on it, I couldn't find it. So in the elevation, in fact, we can, we're looking at the standing seam. The little bit of roof that's above the lower side where you would, you know, presumably be looking in. So, I, I mean, Standing seam is like very cool. <laughs> so thank you. I'm glad you confirmed that it is standing seam. I think it adds material variety. Um, I have a question about how the how the project as presented demonstrates the connection with the offsite parking. That just seems like I need to look more closely, perhaps, or need to be pointed to where to look to see what that connection is from what is presented to us to what is intended to be through the, um, the parking easement, which is in perpetuity, I believe. I think I read that. Um, is, there, is, it, is it developed? Is, it, is there some place I can see it? The, so the, the pedestrian path, presumably. Yes, if you're asking about the physical connection, there is a pedestrian path on the west side of the building that leads directly to these parking stalls. Okay, I'll just look it up in the plans. Um, and then finally, I'm, I'm looking for a trash enclosure. Yeah, we have the trash enclosure inside the building. Oh, okay. So okay. you won't see it. And, and then, okay, great. Is it called out in the plan? It is. Okay, great. I'll look it up. I presume it's on the first floor. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I saw it. Drew, sure. do you have a question? <laughs> yeah, I have a couple questions. Thanks, Chair. Um, so I'm so, sorry to belabor the, the roof parapet question, um, but uh, so it, it looks like there's a 11 foot floor to floor for the first floor. I'm assuming it's 10 or 11 feet floor to floor for the second floor, is that correct? Or is it less on that second floor? Because it's just not shown anywhere. Well. There are dimensions on the elevations to show those heights. Uh, my eyesight at this point with this slight scale drawing, I can't read the, my own dimensions. Yeah, there, and there, there's not. So, so typically, you know, um, I, I'm an architect, so I would put, you know, finished floor, and I would say yeah. 11 feet, and then I would say, you know, whatever, roof line. Yeah. This height, I'm not seeing one for the second floor, and the reason I ask that is you said four-foot parapet, 
So to me, that says if your shortest parapet is 22, 24 foot six at the front, the west of the building where the mechanical units are, and you said it's a four foot parapet, then that would put the floor to floor at like nine foot six, basically from the, the, the second floor to the top of the roof deck, basically. That's correct. Okay, is that about right? Yes. Okay, so the second floor is shorter than the first floor, and obviously because it is less structure, right? You don't have to hold all the weight, right? So you probably have like two feet of structure or something like that. Okay, cool. Um, all right, that answers that. Because again, there's there's two heights of parapets on the front entry, right? There's the kind of the stone bump out, which is a little bit taller. Um, anyway, uh, so I'm just I was just trying to make sure four, four feet's a, a good spot for a mechanical unit. Mechanical units can be very large, so I think we just don't want to see them, right, from the street. So thank you. Um, okay. So I was looking at the landscape plan, and it looked like um, there's both a marina strawberry and a Chinese pistache notated in the legend, but then I wasn't seeing that symbol anywhere. So it looks like you're just intending on planting four coast live oaks. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, that is correct. Our landscape architect couldn't make it today. Um, but that is correct. We propose live oaks in the bioretention facilities. Uh, they are on the planting list in Santa Rosa LID, so we provided that as our selection. Yeah, that was going to be my next question. I'm not a landscape architect, so if, if uh, I remember if Mike were here or Adam, they'd be like, oh, you can't put a tree in a biofiltration facility, but if the live oak can go in the biofiltration for the LID list, then perfect. Um, okay, so that was... And then um, I just had a question about this drive aisle. Um, you know, so we've, we've got all this off-site parking, which I understand and it's already kind of locked in and whatnot, but um, there's only kind of one way to access this site from that parking, but that's a separate comment question. So the drive aisle, so as people utilize this facility, right, they're going to drive in and then they're going to park like immediately adjacent to the building, right? So there's going to be a 12-foot drive aisle and then 14-foot-6 left over for a, a emergency vehicle access should somebody be parked in there. Has that all been reviewed by um, City Fire and whatnot, and they're okay with that? It has, and yes, they are. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, it's just there's really no dimensions or, or kind of description about how that would operate functionally, but if, if Fire's looked at it, that's great. Uh, that Fire ingress, egress. I did see an exhibit with all that, the turning radiuses and whatnot, so if fires look that great. Um, and that's it for my questions. Thank you. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I had I had one additional question, and that is the 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 setbacks. Ah, oh, there's it. So, on page seven of the staff report, it says there's a six-inch setback on the north and the rear and the plan shows a one foot and I'm just like that's and I know on the the so-called rear side there's a flooring store right there so uh, and, but I can't see and it looks like it's right there is that is there literally one foot between <laughs> the project and the flooring that's store that's a good question and there's two conditions on the east side, we are one foot from the property line. The building, is, the flooring store building is about three and a half feet from this building. And we will have to get a construction, temporary construction easement to assist with the construction. On the north side, it, the dimensions on the plan say six foot, six inch minimum, but there's articulation in the building wall. So it articulates to one foot, six, six inches, one foot. And adjacent to it is is anything? Nothing? I mean, I can see the parking. The... On the nor just the parking lot on the north okay. side. Great. Thank you. Okay. Um, I had a question. Was there any uh, thought to providing some kind of um, overhead coverage for people loading, unloading 
items into their storage units. We do have overhead coverage on the exterior double man doors for people coming into, the, into and out of the building. It's um, not typically done in self-storage to put coverage in front of all of the roll-up doors on the exterior of the building. As you can imagine, that's most of the building. And so you'd also have to put that 14 feet high so the trucks don't hit it. And depending on how far that awning sticks out, at 14 foot high, if it's only a three foot awning, it's not gonna give you a lot of protection. So I'm not sure that that would be warranted, but at the areas where the people do come into the building, there are awnings above. And um, was there any consideration given to trying to provide more light for the upper unit? I know you have the, the one block on the um, end or in the middle of the building, which is providing some daylight, but that's it. Yeah, the, the nature of self-storage is such that there isn't usually a lot of natural light. There is some coming in the building, but it's limited. We do have the lights on the second floor uh, at the main cross hallways where the elevators are, so where the most traffic of people will be, there will be the most amount of light. Other than that, there'll be motion sensing lights throughout, so it'll be lit up quite bright. Okay, thank you. Are there any final questions before we move to a motion? I, I have one final question. Um, just looking at the site one last time, um, is there gonna be a requirement as you kind of move further for um, electric vehicle charging? It's likely, yeah, that we could provide that. Okay. I'm just thinking because the fact of that parking count, the parking count number keep goes up, which I think is atypical for something like this, and we got a tiny little site where something can be provided up front, the, the thought that it could impact the, that front parking design. Okay, thank you. Sorry, I was talking. Um, <laughs> would, some, <laughs> would someone like to make a motion for the resolution? Crickets. I move <laughs> to accept the resolution, and we have comments after this, right? So let's get it on, let's get, let's get to it. I move that we accept the resolution. What, what thing, the whole thing? No. <laughs> oh, okay, hold on, hold on, I'm, I, I, uh, no, it's too far away. Actually, actually, I can't read that, but I have it right here. I have the resolution. Okay, here we go. Ha. I move to approve re the resolution of the Design Review Board of the City of Santa Rosa granting design review approval of the Coffee Park self-storage project located at 3242, 3282, and 3300 Coffee Lane, APNs 034-011-074. 034011, sorry, 034-011-077, and 034-011-076, file number DR20-043. I have to do the thing in parentheses, the PR thing as well. In parentheses, PRJ21-034. Waive the And I waive the read, reading of the text. Thank you, Drew. I'll second the motion. All right, um, and now we would like to get some comments from the board. I'll start down here with Vic. I'm so, yeah, with Vic, I'm looking that way. Um, I, I would like to comment on the overhang piece with the wood, faux wood tile. I think it's beautiful, I, and I, I think cantilever works. I think people understand cantilevers now. So a, a, a cantilevered piece that comes out, I, I, don't, I don't see the need to try to tie it in. It's, a, it's, a, it's got the name on it, it's got the windows in it, I, I like it. 
So I, I do not have a problem with that, nor do I have a problem with the um, parapet. Those are my comments. Thank you. Ernest. Um, yeah, thanks again for bringing the project forward. And overall, I'm, I'm, I'm into the project. It's, it's great. Um, I, I'm actually on the other side of the spectrum for um, uh, the floating uh, piece up front. Um, you know, the, the patchwork of that material, it, it shows up one, two, three. Uh, it shows up a couple times, and I think further down on the uh, east side of the building, north elevation, it's it just shows up again as a um, just another r random patch. Um, I don't know that it ties in necessarily. Um, I personally have a preference that it um, it would tie in. I know there was mention that there, that it could impact the awning um, tiebacks. Um, it it seems to be addressed on the uh, adjacent um, kind of bump outs on the west elevation. The the awning is tying back onto the that mater same material, so it seems feasible. Um, it, it could just be a preference. Um, so I'll go along with the board on how, how they decide. Um, I do bring up the parking thing again uh, with the consideration that um, I, th I think there may be a potential for a conflict um, in the site design in that if, we're, if you're at 28 parking spaces total, we need to introduce an electric vehicle charging station it needs to be set up as accessible, so we're going to lose an, uh, a space for an aisle. Let's say we remove that from the parking count. You're still at 27. That means two accessible parking spaces, which means your second parking space in the front is going to probably be accessible as well, meaning that you have an EV charging station in the back, <laughs> meaning you have an accessible route to the adjacent property. So maybe it doesn't work out that way. Um, I think it's just something to consider based on the scoping that I think you are gonna probably have to uh, modify something at some point in time and it could, may, maybe there is potential that um, something might need to shift in terms of the, the parking, so. Uh, may I respond to that? Uh, absolutely. Uh, Mike Wixon could comment on what the actual required number of parking spaces is for this project, but it is not 25 or 28, it's more like five. We just happen to have 25. Right, and and while I, I agree that that's, that could be true, while you might be required to have five, 28 are provided. So I think we would look at the more stringent scoping re requirement. I don't think we could necessarily say that, well, we're not actually gonna use those spaces. If they're provided and they're associated with this project, I think we would wanna look at the full scoping of how many parking spaces are associated with um, this building. Yeah, if the number of accessible stalls is triggered by the excess parking, uh, then it would be in the developer's interest to scale back the existing easement so there are less parking spaces provided because we don't need them. So to get it down to 25 total. Get it down to 10 so we don't need two accessible spaces. Yeah, the cutoffs 20, 20. I mean, if you want to do 10, that's completely fine too. But. Um, hey, Ernest. Yes, sir. Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, Ernest brings up a really good point. I mean, ultimately, the determination of your parking is going to be a result of your building plan check. And Jesse Oswald, who's the chief building official for the city, is going to make that determination on whether or not what's going to be required based on the development of a parcel, right? I mean, that that's a building code issue, which I, I agree with. I mean, I, I totally agree with you. Yeah, yeah I, my, the, my thinking is if we could get in front of it at this level before they develop a full set of plans and can at least investigate it, I think it would be uh, help them out instead of getting a couple tens of thousands of dollars into design and 
realize, well, we got to change something. So, um, as it relates to the other item about the metal seam roof being exposed, I'm actually completely fine with that. I, don't, I think it looks good. So, uh, those are my comments. Michael? Great. Yeah, I feel the same way about the standing seam roof. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really good with the materials and the organization of the materials and the elements on the um, west and south facades. Uh, I'm going to be the uh, I'm going to be the problem guy for the north and east sides. Um, the the design you know our design guidelines talk about four sided architecture and absolutely on the north side there's there's lip service to a four sided architecture and not on the east side. Um, I'm not worried about the industrial building that's there today at all. Um, my experience right now and what I do is in industrial buildings like that and residential areas like this in proximity to transit are being torn down on a regular basis and housing is being built. So um, my concern is not about uh, two years from now when you guys open or ten years from now. It's, it's the idea that, that I believe that this facade will end up probably facing a residential apartment project or something of that nature. I don't know who the tenant is in the building. I didn't go look. I don't know who owns it. Um, but my experience working around the Bay Area and L.A. and other locations is that these types of buildings are disappearing quickly um, where housing is needed. So I don't, I, don't know that, I don't know that I would be asking for a lot more uh, than maybe a little more consistent rhythm uh, and, and a little bit more of the scored stucco mixed in with the corrugated on the north side and I would love to see it just turn the corner on the east side so that there was uh, a, just a, a, a future proofed elevation that had a little bit more of what we look for in four-sided architecture. Um, I don't think it takes a lot compared to what's here. Um, I could almost see pulling some of the narrow panels couple, you know, maybe adding a narrow panel, getting those organized, and then maybe turning the corner with a good expanse at the end and, and on the north side, a little bit better expanse maybe that matches the west corner, and then just turning the corner. So that would be my comment about how to get to four-sided architecture here, not reinventing anything or new materials. And I, again, I bring up my point that we've got to make a decision for the long term here in Santa Rosa. and I. You know, I just wouldn't count on that industrial building being there for the long haul. So, yeah. point taken. And we have talked with a neighbor to the north, and they're an out-of-state owner, and they are have expressed to us that they're long-term holders. But your comments not it yeah. may not be what's long-term, right? It might no, be under, understood, understood. I I would be interested to hear how other board members felt on that on that issue. So. Sure. Thanks, Melody. Um, yeah, I'm in total agreement with Mike. <clears throat> um, I mean, the east elevation is is an incredibly weak elevation in comparison to everything else. Um, I do have a question, though. I was thinking about it. Um, you mentioned the flooring store was three and a half feet, and you mentioned that this is a foot off the property line, so that gives us four and a half feet, which means you're less than five feet. So this has to be fire rated. I'm assuming, right? Okay, so with a fire rated wall, there's, you know, we probably need to keep it flat because it's, it's a rated assembly and whatever's tested, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But to that end, um, <clears throat> I think we can, you know, I would, uh, I would agree with Michael, I think, turning the corner with some of the stucco. Um, you know, a stucco assembly is a, can be part of a rated assembly, much like metal. Um, and, and, uh, it's really, you know, stucco, in fact, is a more, quote unquote, durable fire rated material because uh, it's cementitious unless you're planning on doing EFIS. But anyway, that's uh, neither here nor there. Um, so the, the problem, I think, with turning the corner potentially is now we've reduced our one foot, right? Because a stucco assembly is going to be thicker than a, a corrugated metal assembly, potentially. Um, so the the staff report said six inches minimum so now you'd be at four feet plus or minus uh, do you do you foresee that being an issue um, building design fire rating etc I don't see it an issue for fire reasons um, but also the flooring store 
that's there now that's three and a half feet or so from the building only runs about half the length of the eastern wall and so as we wrap the corner that at the northeast corner there's nothing there that's going to be a problem for that slightly reduced dimension you're talking about yeah so i would i would agree I, I think you could probably turn the corner up until you hit the flooring store with stucco and then keep everything in plane with the metal so you know the vertical corrugated metal assembly and then in the rear at the north side you could probably turn the corner with stucco on that because you do have a bump out <coughs> on uh, that north elevation you actually have two bump outs three bump outs really um, and so I'm wondering you know if, if there's a, a taste for a material change with the bump outs in addition to kind of the the rhythm because then you'd actually have a really pretty clear rhythm, stucco, metal, stucco, metal, stucco, metal, stucco, metal, stucco, um, if that makes sense. I think that makes a whole lot of sense to, to kind of amp that side up and make it feel a little more balanced scale-wise because the huge swaths of metal, I think, are just going to make it feel really industrial and big. And to Michael's point, you know, what if, right, what if a residential... Anyway, so I would encourage dressing up the materials a little bit on the north elevation. Um, the other comment I have elevation-wise is um, I don't have a problem with the west elevation and kind of the, the faux kind of overhead door. I mean, that's, that's, that's the signage, right? That's the, hey, this is a storage facility here. Um, it's done everywhere. Uh, what's nice about it on the west elevation is the doors are below the coping cap on the south elevation on the east side you have a similar bump out component signage great don't have a problem with it but your overhead doors are above your parapet cap your coping cap so it feels uh, a little contrived and fake in that regard so I would recommend that coffee park storage signage element just come down a little bit so that way everything's, even though it's fake, it looks real, if that makes sense. Um, uh, the only other thing I would, uh, I think I have two more comments. I'm not a huge, huge fan of uh, wood tile, just personally. Um, I'm just curious if, if you guys looked at, um, you know, actually using, you know, redwood or cedar or something, uh, or maybe thermally modified wood. Um, we, we just saw a project with thermally modified wood not too long ago uh, instead of the tile. Um, so I would, you know, it may even actually save you a couple bucks to do that. But I know maintenance is a concern, right? The tile is pretty low maintenance, power washing, call it a day. Um, so I would, I would just say I would recommend a real wood, but I totally understand if you would want to go with the tile, and I'm not going to make you do anything different. It's just more of a recommendation. And then uh, the only other thing I noticed, um, and this is just me as an architect, uh, I think the restroom that's accessible from the office that has the pass-through, that might be an ADA violation. Um, so you may want to consider flipping the door that goes from the office into the restroom. Just don't want you to get it hung up in plan check. <laughs> but I don't think that meets code. And are you concerned about the clearance in front of the toilet? Is that what you think? Yeah, yeah, the clearance in yeah. front of the toilet. Yeah, in California, you got to have that 48 inches clear. We're, yeah, I think we did it right to the limit. So, but we'll okay, check cool. that. Yeah, just I, it's just a. I don't even think we would add that to the conditions. It was just more of a, I don't want you to get it hung up and plan check <laughs> by something small like that. We could always flip the door. Did you say flip the door? Yeah, I just said flip it, it yeah. yeah. So that way it opens into the office and then you're done. Yeah. Problem solved. Um, other than that, I, uh, this is one of the most uh, complete packages for a self-storage facility I've ever seen. The CEQA documentation is insane. <laughs> I was looking through it. Um, so uh, just really great job from your applicant team. Uh, 
yeah, there's a lot here um, for something really simple. So I, I really appreciate it. Thank you very much for a great package. I think that's make, what makes it easier for us to say, oh, well, this is great. Oh, this little tiny detail over here. Um, photometrics are great, the whole thing. So really appreciate a really complete package and going after the checklists and everything. So thank you. Just, just want to know on, on that comment, it, the door can swing into the water closet, clear space. It, it's a compliant condition, just, just in case. Does anyone have anything else? All right. Um, do we have any? Oh, let's see. We need a vote. I, I think we need to, I would like to work on a condition around the north and east elevations. Okay. Yeah, and I, I would like to just okay. include a consider, uh, you know, on that, that ceramic tile as well. Just make it simple. All right. And the, the door, I don't know if anybody else agrees on the, the door thing, the fake door, the overhead door condition. I don't know if anybody else agrees. Should we condition that? as well Ernest saying yes no I that was, that was a good idea um, I, I would I would support a consider for both of those both of those um, items would someone like to state this Mike you want to take the the elevation one and I'll take the other two yeah um, I would like to. I'd like to approach the north and the uh, um, shall provide additional stucco wall section on the north elevation um, including the addition of stucco wall section at the east corner of the wall elevation, returning to the east elevation. Do we need to, do we need to articulate that you can't just turn the whole thing into stucco? I think uh, maybe, maybe for the next, maybe to close up the resolution, say um, create a pleasing rhythm of stucco and metal siding. God, I wish Warren could have crafted that. <laughs> he would love the rhythmic part. Yeah. Can you repeat that? <laughs> yes. Did you, Did you type it, Amy? I was. I want to make sure, though, that I have this right. So, are we just going with the last sentence? Create. No, no that was the or, second. That okay. that was an additional sentence. Yep. Okay. So I have most of it, but I have one question. So what I have is, shall provide additional stucco wall section on the north elevation, including stucco on the east the, corner return. Uh, east corner return. Oh, it, no, actually, in, including um, the north or the east end of the north elevation. Including the, okay, east end of the north elevation. Returning to the east elevation. Back in room seven, we just used to sit at a table and sketch this stuff and say, go have fun. It's different now. <laughs> okay, so shall provide additional stucco wall section on the north elevation, including the east end of the north elevation, returning to the east elevation. Right. And then the second sentence is create a pleasing rhythm of stucco and metal siding. Perfect. Okay. Should section be plural? Please make section plural. And then, <clears throat> Michael, did you get the uh, 
I guess the south elevation returning to the east as well as part of that or no because there's like a I don't know, like a foot, a foot-ish between the flooring store and the... I'm okay over there. Okay. That's, yeah, to me that whatever's going to happen over there, that flooring store is, it, you know, parcel's not the scale of the other parcel, so I'm okay with that. Ernest, did you have something? No. Did you say something about the door? Yeah, I have two considers, which I think will be easy. Um, so I would just say uh, consider alternate material choice in lieu of wood look ceramic tile. They want to change it they can change it and then staff you know they, they're not beholden to or if they want to keep it the same and then the other one would be uh, consider consider alignment of roll-up doors hang on let me try this again uh, consider consider roll up door header alignment. Sorry, I'm gonna try this again. Sorry. No, I got it. Consider roll up door alignment below Copen Cap on south elevation. East east side of the building. East, east end, east end of the building, not east side, east end. I think that should do it. Vice Chair, I, have a, I just want to make sure. I think I missed a word. So consider roll up door alignment. Roll up door header alignment. Roll up door header alignment. Below coping cap. Below adjacent coping cap. That's a good way to do that. I know it's a little nitpicky. It just looks silly to me. Cope and cap? Cope and cap. Adjacent cope and cap. Cap flashing, cope and cap. Okay. Yeah. On cope south elevation, east end, east of, end of the building. East end of south elevation. I would say east oh, end east of south. East end of south, south elevation. elevation. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Would someone like to um, modify the resolution? Uh, I'll do it. Uh, I move to accept the friendly amendments as read. And Vic? I accept and I approve. <laughs> Did you second? I accept and approve. Okay, thank you. Now we'd like to do a vote. <laughs> Board Member Birch? Aye. Board, uh, Board Member Liptock? Aye. Board Member Withrich? Aye. Vice Chair Weigel? Aye. Chair Jones Carter? Aye. So that was moved by Board Member Liptock and seconded by Board Member Birch, and that motion passes with five ayes and two absences. Thank you very much for your time today. Um, please note that the action is final unless a lip, an appeal is filed with the Planning and Economic Development Department within 10 calendar days of today's decision pursuant to Zoning Code 20-62.030. This meeting of the Design Review Board is now adjourned.